video that I literally was aggressively avoiding and was not going to do. I said in my last 2022 roundup video that I was done with this series, but I was laying in bed last night and I was like, hmm, let me torture myself. I want to rank all 53 eyeshadow palettes that I've tried this year so far. So um, yeah, I tried to save this for just the very end of the year, but uh, here we are. I spent the last 45 minutes ranking 53 eyeshadow palettes. It's always painful for me to put my babies up in a lineup, but we had to do that. And I'm not going to think too hard about it. At the end of the year, the rankings, the placings will probably be very, very different. What I'm wearing right now will be linked in the description box. This is a tutorial I filmed this morning for my YouTube membership, Beauty Buffs. So that will be up very soon if you're a member of my YouTube membership. <sighs> Let's get into it. Just so you have an idea of when it comes to my palette rankings, I take into all factors. Price point, quality, if I like the color story or not, maybe I was disappointed by a palette, had higher expectations, all of that are factors in my rankings. It's a very personal ranking. This is, you know, my rankings. So, uh, so a palette could be very good quality, but if I don't like the color story, I'm not ranking it very high. So keep that in mind. I give you explanations for every palette though. So let's start off with number 53. Now, this is not the worst, worst palette, like quality-wise, that I've tried this year, it, but it certainly is my biggest disappointment. It's one of the most recent palettes that I've tried, and it's it's really upsetting me. So you get last place. This is the Rare Beauty True to Myself eyeshadow palette. I wouldn't buy it if I were you. However, if you like really sheer eyeshadows, I think you will like this because it, it's very easy to use if you're a beginner with eyeshadows. Funny enough, I filmed the worst of 2022 video and this was in that video and I ended up really liking my eye makeup look. So I, th yes, I am being immature here. This is not as bad as it is, but I will continue to bully this palette because Rare Beauty had an eyeshadow formula that I really, 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 really loved. And then they came out with this nonsense, okay? So the, the mattes are super duper sheer. The shimmers are okay. The shimmer is chunky. This glitter is so dry but it also looked really pretty on my eyelid but i i still i'm very angry at this palette i'm very angry at rare for getting rid of their better eyeshadow formula so i don't recommend that palette though seriously it's not worth it it's not a bad price but it's not worth it okay <laughs> number 52 this is from my beloved natasha denona this is an older palette i actually bought it on clearance and it's not available anymore this is the eyeshadow palette 10 and the quality on this was just off and you guys know the price of Natasha Denona she crazy she expensive she she's ballsy charging what she charges but anyways I got a good good deal on this and some of the colors in here are very very pretty I thought I would like it since I'm super into cool tones but I actually really don't like it I found some of the shades to be really patchy it was difficult for me to create a look and it took a long time for me to create a look so disappointment and price point it's just so expensive Okay, 51. Arguably, this is quality-wise the worst palette that I've tried this year, but I do like the looks and I do like the color story, so it is ranking higher than the previous two, but it's the worst quality that I've tried this year. There weren't very many bad quality palettes that I tried this year, by the way. Everything is, like, workable. So this is the Essence I Like to Mob It to Mob It palette. And a lot of you guys recommended this to me for a good affordable eyeshadow. I have another color of this to try out. So I might end up liking that one more, hopefully. But this one, I did not like the quality of it. The shimmers were super lackluster. I was able to get a look that I like because I really like these colors. So it was workable. Not very good quality. I I know it's dirt cheap, but I would buy e.l.f. instead, you know? I don't like this one. So number 50, okay, this is a newer one. This is the Visi Art Petite Fours Pastille Palette. I liked the quality of this, but the more and more I use it, every single look I came up with this palette, I absolutely hated. This blue is just so ill-fitting with this palette. I cannot get it to work cohesively. And considering that there are only four shades, that's an expectation that I have. The quality is fine. This could be a little bit chalky, but it's I still like it. I don't think it's that bad. And if you take the blue out, you can get a nice look, but it also is extremely boring. So yeah, this palette ended up just really disappointing me because every single look I do to try and incorporate four colors is so ugly. Like, it's an ugly palette. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Spicy Morgan's here today. <laughs> 
until we move up a little bit i'm gonna be spicy okay so number 49 is this palette from ColourPop. this is the apricot me not palette ah yeah does this deserve to be this slow? Probably not, but it's just not a good quality palette and it's a boring color story. So what I'm taking into consideration is that these colors literally already exist a thousand times over in the ColourPop line already and they're better quality. This is not ColourPop's best quality. So the shimmers don't really adhere to the lid. It's one of their inconsistent palettes. The mattes are fine, but yeah, everything about this palette is just so blah. I wouldn't encourage you to buy it. You can get better quality from ColourPop themselves in this exact color story so yeah 48 is this guy from huda beauty right here this is the color block palette in the shade orange and purple and i really don't like this palette one because i think it's kind of ugly like the colors the looks that i have attempted to get with it i just have never really been in love with and one of the best colors in my opinion was supposed to be this one this one was supposed to guide the looks for me i love purple colors but this was super duper patchy and literally ruined my look now if we take this out you you can make this work it's not a bad quality palette after that but overall i don't like the color story i don't like the quality of it 47 is from dior this is the mineral rose trio so these are my second year in a row buying this formulation this is a huge step up from last year Last year's was literally like the worst eyeshadow palette I ever tried. The look you get is so pretty, but this is so boring and it's so expensive. Will I buy these again when they come out again next year? Probably, yeah. I can't help myself. I'm like super attracted to the looks of Dior. But in the lineup of products that I have in front of me, does it stand out? No. Now's the turning point. Everything here is starting to get workable. I don't have as many bad things to say. No. So 46 is from Rem Beauty. This is the Go Go Boots eyeshadow palette. And this isn't bad, but it's, it's kind of mediocre quality considering the reputation that this brand has. They're sold at Ulta. They're not overly expensive but like a couple of the shimmers in here are so so chunky surprisingly though I got a look that I absolutely loved with this palette it's like I said it's such a workable palette the quality in here is not impressive at all it is borderline drugstore quality if you ask me workable but very very messy pretty color story though really liked it for the spring color story wise number 45 is from Dior again so this is with mineral glow we have coral glow i liked this color story a little bit better because it was a little bit more unique in my collection now these are good as like highlights and cheek colors as well underwhelming and overpriced i think it looks pretty on the eyelid just you can get so much better from dior you know though dior has not yet brought it this year i will say normally there's like palettes that i love from dior not this year because i already have another dior palette to show you this is organza organza this color story is kind of bleh to me the shades were a little sheer i was certain i was gonna like this because this is the type of formula that i normally adore from dior the colors didn't really mesh well there's not enough depth in this palette it just was a poor curation of colors if you ask me like not terrible but i don't like the curation if you're wondering like why i would buy an eyeshadow palette where i don't necessarily like the color story or the curation it's because i review these for the quality color story only comes into play when it comes to my personal rankings 43 is from keen dash this is the mono chromance palette she is very very pricey so that's a huge factor in this ranking and i honestly in my original review i liked this palette i thought it was fine i didn't think it was anything groundbreaking but it worked out for me the longer i've had it the less i've liked it honestly it's just not worth the price point the colors work they blend they're pretty they're very very sheer they're somewhat buildable but not really Mine has a little bit of hard pan because I did use my fingers, which she recommends against, but even then, that's weird. I should be able to swatch with my fingers. They should be able to hold up. But yeah, it's just, it's underwhelming. Haven't really loved the looks that I've created with this. It's not a very good pastel palette, if you ask me. 42. This is the Artist Couture Supreme Mauves palette. I was so excited for this because I love, love, love the palettes that Artist Couture has available. This one, all of a sudden, I feel like the quality just went down, down, down. So I love the color story of this, so I'm certainly able to get very, very beautiful looks. But the shimmers in here are a hot mess. I mean, if you look at the palette itself, just look how horribly messy and chunky that is. The shimmers don't really adhere. Everything is wrong with the shimmers here. The mattes are very, very nice. They are a high quality 
quality matte formula. Why did the quality change from what we had before? 41. I don't really have much to say about this palette. It is a fine palette from ColourPop. This is the Secret Admirer palette. It came out during the Valentine's Day kind of time frame. It's very, very pretty, and I thought the quality on this was really nice. It's, it's a bit too hot pink for me. I do like hot pink shadows, but the color story here wasn't doing it for me. I don't have anything negative to say. Things are gonna start turning around here. I liked it. I just didn't love the color story. 40, I have another Dior palette. This is Popeline. Now this one I really like the color story of. It's really soft, but honestly I was expecting a little bit more from it. So in the pan, I think that this palette is stunning. It's a wearable palette for me that I feel like would just like brighten my eyes and my complexion. And it kind of feels flat with application. I wish this was just a wee bit deeper. Again, it's a curation problem here. The shades all kind of look the same on the eyelid and that is a huge, huge red flag for me, especially with the price point of Dior. They should not all be within the same depth with very little difference on the eyelid. So that was my main problem with this one. It's really pretty though. I love the tone of pink, but I don't need five shades of it for like $60, you know? Hopefully you understand. <laughs> Number 39, I feel like doesn't deserve to be this low, but honestly, I forgot about it. It didn't stand out to me at all. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Crush Palette. It's a good palette. It's not bad quality at all all but it's super duper pink which I'm not so partial to and Natasha Denona has come out with better Valentine's themed palettes so I just I wasn't crazy about this one but if you really like the color story it is good quality. Number 38 is the Star Wars palette from ColourPop. This is a newish palette. The packaging of this is incredible. I really do not like the color story on this one. You are able to get like a neutral brown golden kind of eye with this but the blue and red here I'm not jiving with. It's a little bit too truly primary colors here. I just think the color story is kind of ugly but the quality Quality on this is good from ColourPop in case you're wondering if you're a Star Wars fan. I'm also not that much of a Star Wars fan either, so not as partial. 37 is from Urban Decay. This is the Wild Greens palette and uh, it was a missed opportunity from Urban Decay. If you ask me, they could have done some really cool things with this palette. But they added zero depth, which is so unlike Urban Decay. I feel like Urban Decay takes risks, but everything about this palette was safe. But here's the thing, I like it because I'm super boring. I wear neutral shades, so I love the looks that I've created with this palette. The color story is nice, the quality is nice. It wasn't quite an amazing palette. Like there are a lot of things that I would edit before I would have released this. 36 is from Tom Ford. This is the Eye Color Quad Cream in Rose Topaz. This is a very expensive palette. I really like the formula on this. I don't like this palette by Swatch. I don't like this palette when I look at it, but every time I put this on my eyes, I really like this and I like the quality and I like the experience. It is a very, very boring eye look, but it is super high quality. I enjoy this formula from Tom Ford and the looks are really pretty. It kind of gives like a grungy, cooler toned smoky eye. It's very, very pretty. 35 is the best palette I think that's launched from Dior this year. This is the Blue Velvet palette. This is a newer formulation from Dior. It's very subtle. You're not gonna get a lot of shimmers from it because it's supposed to be a velvet formulation. The look was really pretty. It wasn't wham bam pow. I don't wear blues like that so I haven't worn this a lot. The shade in the middle is a little bit odd but I like this. Like it's a fine palette but you know for luxury price points I want to be wowed and I wasn't wowed by this but it was fine. 34 is from Vizzy Art. This is the Petit Force Pesh palette and this is just an extremely boring quad to me. The quality on this is really really great but I'm not tempted to reach for this at all after my review. I haven't really reached for it at all either. There are a lot better color stories from this launch right here and I just feel like I've seen these shades a thousand times over from makeup brands in general and Vizier in general as well. So quality is good, just not inclined to reach for this. 33 is from ColourPop. This is the Get In Fresh palette. This is one of their newer launches that I was actually excited about because it's very rare for me to be super excited about a ColourPop launch anymore. And I was super pumped about this. And overall, I, this is a solid palette, especially for the price point. But there are some inconsistent shades in here. Like some of the shimmers really do not apply to the eyelid. And that's going to be the green shades, which for me was the appeal of this palette. Hence my disappointment. It is not a bad palette, but 
but the shades that I was most excited about weren't that good. And the rest of the shades are repeats. You know, that Apricot Me Not palette I talked about earlier that I said you could repeat, they're in here and they're fine quality. But the pops of this palette, the reason that this palette stands out, aren't that good. So yeah. <laughs> 33 is from Melt Cosmetics. This is the Gemini 2 palette. This is actually really great quality. I think Melt did a great job quality-wise with this, but it is just a really dark, dark palette and they pull even darker on the eyelids which is not really my vibe. I'm more into brighter lighter kind of colors so if you like a really dark deep grungy eye I think you'll like this but I justify ranking it so low despite the quality being so good because they just pull so much darker than they look in the pan and I don't like that aspect. I feel like there's just not enough differences in the shades. We need lighter and deeper levels of depth to create multi-dimensional looks. I just don't feel like you get that dimension and differences in depth with this palette. 31 is from Jaclyn Cosmetics. It's the only eyeshadow palette that they've launched. This is the Lux Legacy palette. Now I will admit I haven't reached for this a ton since it launched. It's a solid solid palette. There's nothing crazy that stands out about it but the reason that I like it is because ideally you know if I don't want to think about a look I want to feel comfortable with what I'm wearing. I do love my neutral tones. I play around a lot with colors, textures, dimension on my channel but if I'm heading out the door I'm not really wearing anything crazy so this is like a nice palette. Nothing that stands out but I like the color story. I like the color options in here. Nothing special though. Number 30 is from Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Snow Lodge palette. I love the color story in this one. It's a little outside of my comfort zone, but they also have colors that are within my comfort zone. My deal with Nomad Cosmetics, everything from the concept to the curation are done so beautifully, but normally in the palettes, there's one or two shades that I'm not quite so in love with. Sometimes I find their mattes a little harder to work with or they'll blend away. Easily. This is a solid formulation from Nomad here. I really do feel like they've improved their quality over time. A couple of the shimmers here I'm like uh, about, but generally speaking, I've enjoyed my time with this palette. And what's also pushing it forward is I just really love this color story. I find it to be really unique. It was a winter launch and I think it's so, so pretty. I think Nomad Cosmetics is a really great brand to support because the vision, all of it is right here. I mean, so beautiful. Love this palette. 29 is from Sigma. This is the new mod palette and again Sigma is mostly a miss for me when it comes to eyeshadow palettes I haven't been in love with their eyeshadows except until recently and this was a decent formula from them and what pushes this forward for me is because I love the mauve tones in here and the warm reddish tones I think it is a gorgeous palette you have more neutrals up top you have more of the brighter red berry shades here towards the bottom the quality was definitely solid my advice with Sigma is never ever pay full price for their products. They are not worth the price tag, but Sigma has really great sales all the time. So if you can get this for 30% off, then it is worth it. 27 is from Sydney Grace. This is the Be Mine palette that they came out with. And I mean, Sydney Grace is one of the best quality eyeshadows that you will ever, ever experience. So they are an indie brand. If you've never heard of Sydney Grace, highly recommend you look into them. Like it's a pretty palette, but I'm utterly bored by this color story. I used it a couple times. Love the looks that I got. They were so pretty, but they were all quite understated but you're getting really, really great quality eyeshadows. But if I'm being honest, I haven't been that inclined to reach for this palette. I like the brown row, the reddish rosy row, and then you have like the smoky, cooler-ish kind of row here. I do want to use this more now that I'm looking at it because I really haven't reached for it a ton, but I just use the fact that I haven't reached for it a ton as a sign. 26 is actually a really, really good palette. I highly recommend it to you guys. This is the new Pat McGrath Labs Mini Eyeshadow palette in Midnight Voyage. So five of the six shades in here were repeats and it is an extremely tiny little palette. So I'm not going to rank it as high simply because I already owned these colors, but if you're new to Pat McGrath or you want to try one of their palettes, the quality in here is amazing. I'd even argue that this shade is better quality than what was already existing in the line. It's a really gorgeous color story as well. So just for me, it wasn't a worthwhile purchase. I bought this for a review, so I wasn't very excited about it, but it's a 10 out of 10 quality quality wise. So make of that what you will. I just realized I was completely off count. So go by the number on the screen. Let's go on to number 26. This is from NARS. All these palettes officially from here on out. Really, really great launches. So this is a NARS Summer Unrated palette. So good. 
very boring. NARS has come out with this palette a billion times over again, but dang if I don't love my makeup every time I wear this. I love the experience every time I wear this. The quality is really great. It is a very, very, very nice palette. Nothing about this is unique, nothing. But it is just such good quality that I love it. So this is a really, really nice one. Just very dupable. Very. Number 25 is from Huda Beauty. This is the color block palette in the shade blue and green. So the purple orange version of this I strongly disliked. I much prefer this one. I think the color story here is a little bit more cohesive. I like the looks that I create. The cake liners in here are very, very good quality. Everything about this palette is really great. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. It's not a palette that I'm gonna wear a ton, which is why this is not in like the top 10 or anything, but I've had a lot of fun with this. I actually want to use it some more because I haven't used it a lot. Naturally, you can see I'm not gonna wear colors like this very often, but quality in this is really great. It is a fun play on the color block idea, and I do like the colors of this. 24 is from Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership Belle of the Ball. This is the second collection from the Bridgerton launch, and I like this palette. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I think the quality is really great. It's just nothing special color story-wise, except for this shade. The shade right here is, it carries this palette if you ask me, but if you're a Pat McGrath fan, you know that we have these colors from Pat McGrath over and over again. These two shades, this shade right here, like, come on. These three shades, of course, are very, very beautiful. But yeah, this just wasn't a special one from Pat McGrath. It's a nice palette, but it doesn't stand out in the line at all. 23 is from Adept Cosmetics. This is the Heather Austin collaboration. This palette is insane when it comes to the textures that are in here. So my only thing with this palette is I think the mattes are not the best. They're a little bit harder to blend but the shimmers that Adept has so so nice I worry about the lifespan on these I feel like they might dry out really quickly because they, like this one right here is pretty much a gel almost and they're very very creamy so I'm interested to see how these age but of course the shimmers and multi creams that you get in here are incredible that I don't even care about the matte quality because I'm just lathering the multi chromes all over my eyelid as well but it's not a perfect palette but it still is so good so next up I have the Cleona and Emily Violet Marie collaboration palette, the Dragon Fruit palette. Guys, I've fallen in love with indie brands. I'm looking at my rankings right now, so many indie brands in the top because they really do do it best. So the only reason that I don't absolutely love this palette is because it's very, very pink. I don't love hot, hot pink eyeshadows. I just don't. It's not my style. I wish this was a little less pink, but nothing like Cleona quality to just carry this palette, oh my goodness. I don't even care what the color is because it is done by Cleona with the quality. I'm gonna love it no matter what. I've had a lot of fun with this. You have some really fun summery pops, multi-chromes, duochromes, shimmers, satins. It's a really fun palette. I'm a little sad that there's no mattes in here, but also not that sad because I only want shimmers from indie brands anyways. So I really like this palette. Quality is 10 out of 10, just a bit too pink for my preferences. 21 is from ColourPop. I love this palette. This is a mega palette. It's one that's totally worth it. If you ask me, this is the Rock Candy palette. Now this is ranking pretty high because I am obsessed with the color story on this one right here. I love cool tone neutrals and I feel like this perfectly fits the bill. I think it's really great quality from ColourPop as well. So if you like the kind of tones that I do, I think you will really love this one. This is one of my favorite color stories for sure. It's not quite as cool as Stone Cold Fox, which is one of my favorite palettes from ColourPop. It has more of like the mauve turn to it, which I think is really, really nice. So I really like this one, so pretty. Number 20 is from Chanel. Bougie, <laughs> but this is the Mediterranean palette. Honestly, is there really anything that special about this palette? If you take a look at it, no. But there's something about the way that these look on the eyelids that's so gorgeous. Now, if you don't like neutrals or like a simplistic, elegant neutral eye, you're not going to like this palette. This is not for everybody. But for me, I really do appreciate a delicate eye look that has like something special to it. This has the luxury Chanel look on the eyelid. It is the best quality Chanel palette that I've tried. There's much more depth on the eye than it looks in the pan. And when I'm talking about luxury, I'm talking about the way that they apply with ease and how they look so sophisticated 
sophisticated and complex on the eye, yet so simple at the same time. And this really embodies that, so I love this one. I think this is a great everyday palette. Definitely the best palette I've tried from Chanel. Okay, number 19 is from Nomad Cosmetics. This is one of the palettes that I'm planning on using a ton this summer. This is the Paradise Islands, and again, Nomad does an incredible job with the packaging, the aesthetic, the color story. This one is so awesome. I think there's like one shade in here that I didn't like. The rest so far have been really fantastic. Every single look that I've created with this, I've had so much fun with. I've been really obsessed with. The price on this is very good as well. Just a solid palette if you're into this kind of color story. Forced me to step outside of my comfort zone, but still like I love the looks that I create with it. Number 18 is another one from Pat McGrath. This is from the first Bridgerton palette. This is the Diamond of the First Water. Nothing super special here. Again, a lot of pinks, which we've seen a lot from Pat McGrath, but just a dang good solid palette, okay? I can't lie. I love this blue shade here. I mean, I like the looks that I create better with this than the second Bridgerton palette that I showed you prior. It's a little bit more up my alley because it's a touch more mauve, but the quality in here is so, so good. It's normal Pat McGrath quality, but it's it's not anything too special. You guys, I'm also a huge Bridgerton fan, so that also plays a factor as well. I really like this palette, but is it the best palette in the Pat McGrath line in general, which I've collected for years? No, I will wear bronze seduction over the Pat McGrath Bridgerton any day. Yes, I have a ColourPop palette ahead of the Bridgerton palette. So this is the Sweet As Can Be palette by ColourPop. It is the Winnie the Pooh collaboration palette. So good. This palette is so boring, but the quality on it is so high quality. I don't understand and I love the looks that I get with this. I love the honey kind of themed looks that I create with it. I love the green tones in here. Even the warm tones here I've had a lot of fun with. This is like a neutral palette but a little bit different than what I'm used to so I've had a good time with this. The quality is great and the price point. Fantastic. If you can get your hands on it, highly recommend it. 16 is from Wayne Goss. This is one of the newest palettes that I've tried. This is the Smoky Quartz palette. This this is the palette to create that very simple 90 smoky eye. I've talked about this recently, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but the quality of this reminds me of really great Tom Ford quality because of how easy it is to use. I do think it's a bit pricey, but these shadows literally do the work themselves, and it's a really great answer if you've been wondering how to get a simple 90 smoky eye with ease, kind of a look that Kim Kardashian's been rocking a lot lately. It's with this palette. This palette definitely surprised me. Number 15 is from Busy Art. We have another Petty Four, and this is the lavender one right here. I've said this before, I'm really, really, really into purpley tones, so I think that this is a great curation of purple tones in one little quad, very easy to use and very, very great quality. And I like how the tones here are a little bit more periwinkle. I don't know, you just don't see a lot of brands that are willing to go that shade of purple with their palettes. But yeah, really, really great quality. It makes an easy purple look in seconds. Love this. Which leads me to number 14, which is also in the same collection. This is Pistache. Now, the, the two can go back and forth. It doesn't matter which one is ranked 15 or 14. I love them just as much. This one is just more on the green side. And I just happen to be a little bit more into green tones for the summer. So that's why I ranked it just one spot ahead. But same deal. Great quality, easy, effortless, monochromatic look that you get with this. And I love how they're slightly pastel. So love that one as well. Highly, highly recommend it. So number 13 is from Lethal Cosmetics. This is the Velvet Dusk palette. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with these grungy tones. I think this palette is so beautiful. I still want to play with some shadows in this palette because I have not used every single shadow. I've created multiple looks, but there's a lot of other avenues I need to go with this palette, but I love the color stories that Lethal curates. I think they do a phenomenal job. I have a few more on my desk that I want to play with, but yeah, I'm into the Lethal formula. The mattes are very easy to use. They're not as pigmented. They don't build up as much as I would like them to, but the shimmers are incredible. Number 12. Ooh, oh my gosh, Odin's Eye can do no wrong. Not to mention Angelica Nikist. 
collaborated with them on this palette. This is the Hello palette. Look at this artwork. I mean, this palette is so beautiful. I love it even more now that I've decided that green is my color for summer. So I'm even bumping it up from where I thought it would be when I originally reviewed this. But Odin's Eye does no wrong. They are incredible. And of course, Angie's genius mind curated this palette. It is so fun. I'm of course more partial to the top half here. And then I don't really use the bottom half too much, but there's some really interesting textures and colors in here and this is just all around a really beautiful palette anything that you get from Odin's Eye is gonna be incredible when it comes to eyeshadow palettes so yeah you need to try Odin's Eye if you haven't already number 11 is from M Cosmetics this is the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette in the shade Da Vinci I don't know just a really solid formula I had never tried M Cosmetics eyeshadows until this year and I've been blown away just a really great solid easy to use formula and I'm a neutral girl at heart and I just think they did a really great job with their neutral palettes from this collection itself which is why number 10 is also the Rodin palette and again I could kind of interchange these two. It doesn't really matter. One is really not better than the other. This one is a little bit lighter. Honestly, I think I prefer the darker one, Da Vinci, but this one is still really nice as well. Just solid formula. I don't know. I can't say anything bad about these palettes. I've reached for them a lot. I like how compact they are. They're gorgeous on the eyes. Number nine is from Kaleidos. I can't remember the name of this because it doesn't have the name on it, which very much annoys me, but it's this one right here. Oh my gosh. I cannot even begin to explain to you the quality of this palette. I'm telling you, indie brands are doing the best. Oh my gosh, we're at the final 10 already. That's incredible. This is one of the best silvers that I've ever used. It's one of those shades where it will hold the pigment all the way down your arm. It's so creamy. If you like these really gray, cool tone smoky eyes, this is one of the best quality ones I've ever tried of this color story. Number eight is also from Kaleido, so I'm kind of keeping them around the same place because they're equally as good, equally as nice quality. Quality. I just like this color story a wee bit more. This is cold brew. Again, you have this amazing shimmer. The mattes are so buttery. They blend really beautiful. They're very pigmented. They just, ugh, they look so smooth on the eye. I don't know. I don't have anything bad to say about it, okay? I love it. I love it. I love this one. Really great neutral lovers. You will love this seven is from Colourpop. This has been my palette for the summer I've talked about it multiple times. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly the in the limelight palette If you're looking to step outside your comfort zone play with greens this summer I definitely recommend it. It's it's been surprisingly Wearable for me. I felt surprisingly comfortable rocking this just for like a wash of color I'll pick a shade maybe use one of the greens in the crease or if I'm feeling more neutral I'll use the brown in the crease all of these shades go together so well. It's a really great quality palette from Colourpop. My favorite one that's launched this year so far. Definitely. Easily. Without even having to think about it. Number six is from Natasha Denona. Did not think that this was going to rank so high, but honestly, I used it a ton and it continued to re-inspire me. So this is the pastel palette. Didn't think I was going to love it, but turns out this is a really great solid pastel formula. You can tell how high quality it is. It took a bit for me to understand the good quality of this, but yeah, it's really good quality just with how the shades hold their color, how they blend together, how they don't overblend. It's a high quality palette. And I didn't think I was going to like it, but turns out I am so into pastels because of this. Even when I wasn't using this palette, I was thinking about this palette and what looks I would create if I were using the Natasha palette. <laughs> Like, I don't know. It's crazy. I had an obsession with this this spring and couldn't put it down. So I had to rank it nice and high. Number five is from Tom Ford. This is one of the most justified prices that Tom Ford has ever come out with because normally like 90% of the time I complain, but this is the Metal Lust Quad. And of course, it's near impossible to get a hold of, but this is one of the best just neutral everyday colors. This is a new formula from Tom Ford and I need him to continue to come out with these shades because they are just so stinking good mats literally blend themselves this is like a dream come true for me this is an everyday palette like this is what I want from an everyday palette number four is from Odin's Eye this is the Salmain 2 palette this is their most recent collection that came out it sold out so quickly it is quite the colorful palette but I've had a lot of fun with it I've been really inspired by this palette and inspiration is a huge huge factor when it comes to how I feel about palettes so the price point is right the packaging is incredible the color story is incredible the quality is incredible I don't know how Odin's Eye does 
does it. And of course, I'm playing with these top, well, in this case, the bottom two rows so much. And I'm so impressed every time I use this. So if you wanna add some color to your collection, this is a great route to go. Number three, this is probably one of the most popular palettes of the year so far. This is the Patrick Tell Major Dimension Two Rose Palette. It is such a good palette. Now, I'm tired of the rose colors. I'm tired of the pink colors, but I couldn't not rank this so high because it is such a well done palette. And that just goes to show, even if the colors are repetitive, if a brand does a good job with it, it doesn't matter. The quality in here is incredible. The mattes are super nice. I love the dimension in the shimmer shades. Don't really use the cream shades as much. I don't really care about that, but I love every single look that I come up with when it comes to this palette. Now, you have to like rose tones. You're only gonna get rose looks with this palette, so if you don't like rose looks, don't buy this. But if you do like rose looks, and I know a lot of people do, this is one of the best rose tone palettes on the market, just as long as you like like dimension and glitter on the lid. If you don't like dimension and glitter, you probably won't get your money's worth from that. Number two is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk Dreams palette. A little quad that holds so much weight for me. I don't know, I love this color story. It's not really that unique, but if a palette is good quality, you know, I take that into consideration. The mattes are super buttery and blendable. I love the dimension of the shimmers here. And I am a fan of rose tones, okay? I crapped talked the really, really hot pink ones towards the beginning of the video, but I like a good rose tone palette, hence the Patrick Ta and this one right here. Charlotte Tilbury's quads are very expensive. They are terrible value, but she makes up for it when she creates a quad that has this quality. Effortless, that's the word I would use to describe it, and you get such a glam look for little to no effort with that quad. Okay, number one. I'm honestly, like, I'm not confident that this is number one. I'm really not. I just think for the moment it's number one because it's like a new shiny object. So I'm gonna put it at number one. We'll see how it ranks at the end of the year, but yeah, I've been obsessed with the ABH Novo palette. I don't know, I'm just really excited for it. I'm excited to see where ABH is headed with this palette. It is the neutral palette of my dreams, but still plays into like kind of my more bold colors you know purple i love a purple you have neutral greens in here so purples and greens are the only like colorful colors that i feel super comfortable wearing out and this palette touches it the quality is really great i think the mattes are super blendable very easy to use the shimmers are consistent great abh quality like i don't have a negative to say this to me is a neutral palette but elevated modern not boring it's my current favorite palette number one i think if i had filmed this a few weeks later i don't know that it would be number one but you know my shiny new toy i gotta play with it i gotta give it its moment it's my number one right now holy there we have it you guys i did it i just ranked all 53 eyeshadow palettes that i've tried so far this year oh, that's for me i wasn't gonna do this but it's always a fun time when i do <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful again i will have everything that i'm wearing on my face down below but not everything that I mentioned about would take too much time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. Like, please. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.